What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension for architecture video for you. So this is a continuation of my series on SketchUp extensions with architectural applications. So these applications can vary between different site work extensions or extensions that you can use to create doors and windows or cities or just a lot of different things that make sense in architecture. So remember that you can get links to all of the extensions that I've covered in this series by downloading my free architecture extensions guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. So in today's video, we're going to check out an extension from Fredo 6 that really simplifies the site creation process using either contour lines or points. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So like I said, the download location for this extension can be found inside of the architecture extensions guide. So just make sure you check out the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. And basically this extension has two different functions contained inside of it. So the first is going to be the option to create terrains using contours. So this is going to operate a lot the same way that the uh, SketchUp uh, from contours function inside of Sandbox Tools works, but this one is a superior tool for a couple different reasons. So the first is, let's go ahead and run through this real quick. If I select these contours and then I use Sandbox Tools from contours option, this is going to come in here and this is going to create a surface by triangulating between the different points inside of your contours. And so if I turn on hidden geometry, and let's say that I turn off my contour lines as well, you can see how you definitely get a surface in here, but it's really nasty geometry. You can see how all of these are different points that are just triangulated based on the different edges inside of those contours. And so if that's all you have and all you want to do, that's fine, but uh, Topo Shaper actually does a much better job of creating better geometry. And the reason for that, and I'm just going to go through this really fast, but we'll talk through the functions in a minute. Um, the reason for that is where where sandbox tools creates the terrain using triangulated points topo shaper actually creates your terrain using a grid and so when it creates when it uses a grid what it does is it creates much cleaner geometry and we'll talk through this in a second but i'm going to go ahead and click on generate terrain and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through i'm going to click outside of this group of the terrain that was created and we'll just turn our contours off real quick i'll just delete that out um, but if you look at the difference between these two terrains, even though you get a similar result, you can see the hill is the same and everything else. Um, this terrain on the left hand side has been created with uh, this grid rather than with these points. So what that means is while this is all nasty geometry um, that's just really difficult to work with, this stuff over here is much cleaner. So you can see how this is actually in here is very clean kind of quad looking geometry. So that's the first reason you should use Topo Shaper is because it just creates it's a better result. And so I'm just going to undo out of this real quick because I want to take another look at this piece of terrain. So the way that this extension works is you um, double click inside of your group and you select your contours. When you select your contours, you click on this button right here to generate terrain from contours. And so the first thing you're going to notice is this actually comes in here and it finds gaps inside of your terrain. So it actually helps you clean up your terrain. You can see how you've got all these little red dots in here. Well, this is where this has found gaps and it's actually adding in edges um, in this junction right here is what it calls this. And so what this is doing is this is coming in here and while uh, Sandbox Tools just kind of like triangulates and ignores this, this actually comes in here and tries to clean up your contours first. And so you can accept or not accept the different junctions in here. So like, for example, if you didn't want this to be continued like this, you could go ahead and you could uh, ignore the junction by clicking on it. Um, I think that's a pretty good fill in. You can also come in here and you can see how there's a couple other areas where there's different things that were getting ignored, where well, you can click in here to accept or not accept them depending on what you want. So you can also click on the different edges and there's an option in here to simplify these contours when it does this. And there's also an option in here to include a contour or exclude a contour, um, depending on if you really want to use it or not. So if you had a contour in here or something like that that you really didn't want included in here, so for example, maybe like this little thing right here, you could click on this button right here to accept 
exclude that from the contour creation process. So the problem is it looks like when we excluded that, it looks like it also excluded this contour. So we'll go ahead and turn that back on. Um, but then once you've gone through this cleanup process and you've decided what you want to accept, you can click on the button for update contours and reload. You can see how what that did is that actually came in here and that closed the gaps that you had inside of here. So you can kind of clean this up before you use it. And then once you've done that, you can edit the altitude of your different contours just by clicking on this. Usually I leave this as is um, unless I really need to make a change, but you can edit that if you want to. And then once you've done all of that, you just click on the button for calculate terrain. So what that does is that actually comes in here and this uh, calculates a terrain based on all of your edges. And in this view, the two things you can do is you can adjust how this uh, how this bridges the gap between different contours so you can either round them or you can flatten them that's kind of your call and then you can also adjust the size of your grid here. So when adjusting the size of your grid can get kind of important if you have a large CAD file. Um, you probably don't want to have a giant grid. So for example, if I took this and instead of having 50 and 48, I typed in 100 and then I clicked on the button for done, what that's going to do is that's going to update my grid with more boxes in here, which is fine if you're dealing with a smaller area. If you're dealing with a much larger area, you might want to take your grid and make it a little bit smaller instead. So you can see how um, this button right here will allow you to link these or not link these um, depending on if you want to maintain the proportions of your grid. So you could also, if I went to 25 and 24, this is going to give me much larger boxes in here. You can see how those are what's being used to generate your surface. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put this back to 100 by 96 and click on the button for done. And then once we've done that, and once this kind of generates this mesh, we can move on to the next step. So you can move on to the next step by clicking on the button for generate terrain. So what that's going to do is that's going to take you to the final step where you can adjust, um, first of all, by clicking on this button, if there's a skirt around the outside of this. So you can see if you click on the skirt, this fills in this edge and adds kind of a surface in here. If you don't want that, you can turn that off. You can also set if this is going to include or exclude your contours. Um, so if this is going to create contour lines in here or not. And then you can also set if there's a 2D map of the contours that's created. And if that map is gonna be above or below your 3D terrain. So all of those are options that you can set um, in this step. And then you can also set if you want altitude labels included on your 2D map. So if you say yes, you can see how this is actually going to include your altitude labels in here um, for each one of your um, for each one of your contours. And you can adjust the labels. You can either set this to um, include this for all of these or you can set this to only include labels for contours at a certain altitude. So like for example, if you just wanted this to be um, every six inches, you could set this to six inches and you can see how now this adds a zero, a six, a one, uh, a one foot, a one foot six. So it's just labeling every six inches as opposed to all of the different contours. So you can adjust all of these different things and then once you're done, you can come in here and click on the button for exit tool. When you exit the tool, that's this is just gonna come in here and this is just gonna finalize your surface. And now you have this nice 3D surface in here. that you've generated using Tapa Shaper. And it's a much better mesh than the one that was created by Sandbox Tools. And so the other function that gets really important, um, and I get a lot of questions about this actually, is sometimes you don't necessarily get your elevation data with contours. Sometimes you get your elevation data in the form of a point cloud. A lot of the time what'll happen is surfaces get measured as a number of different points rather than contours. And so you need to be able to bring those in and create a 3D surface from those. Well, if you try to do that with the From Contours tool, so if I double click in here, again, I click on From Contours, contours, you can see how you get an error because this doesn't allow you to import your point cloud. However, 
if you were to click on this group of points and then click on this second option over here, um, Topo Shaper actually creates a tri mesh terrain um, using all those points. So while this one works for contours and it creates quad geometry, um, the actual terrain that's created from the point cloud is going to look a lot like the terrain that's created uh, using sandbox tools because it uses this triangulation function. So what you do is you just select your points and they need to all be in a group with no other geometry in them and then you can just run this and what this is going to do is this is going to go through and it's going to bring bring up a number of different options for things that you can do with these points so in this situation for example um, this gives you an option to adjust the way that your terrain is going to be created so you can set if this is just going to create like a convex shape based on your outer points or you can kind of try to square that out square that off if you want that to be a square so you can also adjust some other settings in here generally speaking I kind of leave these alone um, you do want to pay attention to the max triangles function if you don't adjust this this, to, this can just sit and spin and you don't necessarily want this but the way that this works is to start off what you can do is you can click on the button right here for next iteration so what that's going to do is that's going to come in and that's going to generate a mesh based on triangulation of the points um, so what it it's doing is it's basically calculating a hidden line between all of these different points. If I was to turn hidden geometry off, it would just look something like this. But what you can do is you can go through various different iterations of this if you want to. So the more iterations you go through, the more points this is going to triangulate and interpolate. So if you like this the way that it is, you have a slower computer, you don't necessarily need to go through any more iterations, but you can if you want to. And then if you're just not really worried about it, you don't think it's going to lock up or anything like that, you can go ahead and click on this button right here for auto calculation. And so that'll run through the rest of the different iterations that are in here. So it'll just run through multiple different iterations and what you're going to notice as it does this is this is just going to add in some other different points and triangulations so it's basically finalizing all of the calculations to generate this mesh you don't necessarily need to do this but if you want this to go through the entire um, set of steps you can definitely do that and so once you've run all the way through that, you're going to notice that this actually came in here and this added a skirt around the perimeter. Well, it also gives you the option to add contours. So if you want this to have contours in here, you can just click on the button for ISO contours. And what that'll do is that'll allow you to actually generate contours in here based on your elevations. And you can adjust the interval between those as well. So you could set this to like one inch. And you'd get a lot more contours. So you can see how this is coming in here and this is calculating those. And obviously this is a point cloud that I've made a little bit smaller and you probably wouldn't want to do that at one inch but you can see how you can definitely make that adjustment and make this whatever you want it to be so if I did this every two inches it would look something like this so and you can turn the skirt on and off depending on what you want there and then I don't really mess with the points function all that much um, but you can see how this makes it really easy for me to come in here and generate a terrain based on a point cloud then once you're done, you can just click on the button to exit tool and this will finalize and you'll have this great terrain that you can work from um, moving forward. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, I really like this extension for your terrain generation, especially because it's free, but also because it does such a great job of generating great terrains, both with the tries um, using the points, but also using the quad geometry um, using the contours. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Have you been using this extension? Did you know it could do some of these things? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week um, as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys